Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It is the 17th of January and not that many updates this week, so this should be pretty quick. As always, if this is useful, please go ahead and hit that like, subscribe, comment and share. Uh, quickly, a couple of new videos this week I posted. The first was really a study hints and tips cram guide for the artificial intelligence, the AI 900 exam that gets you kind of the AI fundamentals certification. A lot of people had asked for that. And then I created a kind of walkthrough and demonstration of the new Azure AD one-time passcode, kind of fallback option if I couldn't use the other B2B guest options. And I was joined by Baby Yoda to actually help demonstrate that. So in terms of Azure updates this week, so on the networking side, you're probably aware there's different types of kind of public IP and load balancer. We think about basic and standard. And up until this point, I couldn't convert a basic to a standard. I would have to just recreate it, but then I would lose that public IP address. So what they've enabled now is I can actually upgrade a basic public IP to a standard public IP. Remember things like standard give me that availability zone. Um, zone redundancy. So now I can do that conversion and also I can convert at the same way a basic load balancer to a standard load balancer. Remember the SKU has to match between the public IP and the load balancer. Now to change the um, public IP and upgrade there are PowerShell and CLI commands to do that and I'll have the links in the description below. To actually change the load balancer, there's a script you have to run. And once again, in the description, I have the link to that script. But now it is possible. Then it's really a whole bunch of miscellaneous things. So Azure Automation Runbooks are moving to GitHub. If you go and look at Azure Automation, and I'll show this quick. So if we look at Azure Automation, if we just quickly look here at an automation account. There's a whole gallery of scripts those runbooks provided. So here, for example, I can say, hey, browse gallery. And in the source, well, now you'll notice we have GitHub. So all of the scripts today that are in kind of that script center, what we're actually going to see is they're all going to move over to GitHub. So that is going to be that future direction of over 700 different kind of scripts that are provided. Well, they were moving into GitHub, which is kind of that standard source control version control system now for Microsoft. So we can see those moving. Microsoft has a document. There's obviously different naming rules and requirements around all the different types of resource available in Azure. They've brought all of these together actually in this document. So once again, I've got the description below, but we can now go and look at this document. And for every single type of Azure resource, we can now see things like all the length and all of the valid characters that we can use in it. So a huge, huge document, but now really is that single place we can go to to quickly go and check, hey, what, what are the valid kind of combinations that we can have? The AZ CLI, super powerful. Um, that along with the AZ PowerShell module, really the two ways we think about from a scripting perspective, interacting with Azure, both the PowerShell AZ module and the Azure CLI are cross-platform. There's actually a nice uh, call automatic update capability. From version 2.11, I don't have to worry about, well, is there a new version of the Azure CLI anymore? It would just auto update. So we can actually see this, if I jump over and open up um, kind of a terminal session, let's just dive into this. So what I can actually do is from within here, if I just do kind of AZ version, we can see I'm actually running 2.17. And if I look at my config, I can get my auto upgrade status and what we can see here is, well, my enable is set to yes. And I've actually set the prompt to no. 
so it will just automatically upgrade itself. Now to configure these, I can just do az config set auto upgrade, and then it's dot enable, exactly as you're seeing above there, equals yes. And then if I don't want to get prompted, I can just set the prompt equals to no. It's exactly what I have in my configuration. So now the AZ CLI just behind the scenes will automatically check and upgrade itself if there's actually a new version. So again, another nice piece of functionality. Um, the application change analysis, which I've talked about in a number of previous weeks. So that's that ability that hooks into the Azure resource graph and enables me to go back and look at, well, what's changed over a certain environment. So now that's actually available as a workbook data source. So if I actually go in and create my own kind of custom workbook, one of the sources you'll actually now see is actually the application change analysis. So I could go and create various workbooks and queries based off of that. And then finally, Insights for Azure Data Explorer is now in preview. If we think about all of the different services in Azure, and remember the whole point of Insights is that there's metrics, there's logs that we could go into and we could look at the values, but do we really know which are the important ones? So what Insights does is you think about, well, the people that actually create that feature, they go and help drive what are these curated set of metrics and logs that actually mean something that I care about and then visualize and bring those things to the forefront. So if we quickly jump over to, for example, Azure Monitor, we can see there's a whole number of different insights available for a number of different solutions. And if I jump over to the Insights Hub, what we can see now in preview, we have this new one available for Azure Data Explorer clusters. So this is gonna bring those key metrics and logs to the forefront about really what matters around Data Explorer, um, ingestion, storage, queries, etc. So it's gonna be a great place to go to actually get a heads up and a curated set of things that you probably do need to care about. So that's now available there in preview. And that's it. So again, I said it was a kind of pretty quiet week, but a few things I wanted to kind of call out. Um, I hope that was useful. Any questions, please kind of comment below. And as always, until next week, uh, take care.